If you're like me and you're fed up with popping shock Schrader valve fill adapter seals, well, you just might want to keep on watching this video. Hey folks, we're back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to be going over filling up a IFP chamber in a shock that has a Schrader valve using a nitrogen system. The reason I'm making this video over the last few months, I've had a few people ask me this question. And coincidentally, it happened to be during a point in time where I was looking for a better solution myself than the ones I was using. And I think I finally found one that works great. The big issue with these things, at least for me, is when filling up these IFP chambers that have Schrader valves with nitrogen or a hand pump is popping the seals on the adapters. We need fill adapters for these things. They have seals on them and they just seem to always pop after using them. I'll be lucky if I could get like two, three uses out of them. The other issue, and this one's mainly with a nitrogen system, is finding a chuck that's easy to work with when using those fill adapters. And in this video, I'm gonna go over a solution that helps solve both issues. So let's go over it. So when using a nitrogen system to fill up an IFP chamber in a shock, the shock that have pellets are actually easier, in my opinion, than the ones with Schraders. We grab our needle tool, we plug it into the system, we take our shock, plug the needle into the IFP chamber, fill it up, shut the system down, pop out the shock, and you're all done, right? So with Schrader-based shocks, we need a tool. It's a fill adapter tool. This allows us to fill the chamber while plugged up either to a hand pump or to a nitrogen system. Now the issue with this tool is that these seals over here constantly pop. I mean, I'm always popping these things. And to give you an idea what they look like when they pop, they will chip. So if you look at this one here, hopefully you can see that clearly, there is a chip on this side, right? And it's, it's really hard to get around that. To give you an idea how bad it is, I literally just buy these things in bulk. They'll give you like five of these seals maybe in a pack. I don't remember if it was three or five when you buy a fill adapter, but you'll go through them like that, right? As far as seals, you could buy them super cheap. I get them at the O-ring store, no affiliation by the way. Uh, I'll put the part number below. It's a four millimeter inner diameter, one millimeter thick seal. They're I think four cents each. So for two bucks, you get 50 of them. Yeah, it's cheap, trust me. So why does this happen? It's due to the design of the actual fill adapters. So basically the way this works, right? We need the adapter, we gotta plug it in to the, the, the port over here. Now, the base of the adapter is what actually activates the valve core over here. We have to screw it down. The more we screw it down, it gets to a point where you hit that base and then it's gonna push it down. And from that point on, we could either fill it up with air using a hand pump or a nitrogen system. Now, when we're all done, we can't remove the pump or the nitrogen system from the adapter. We have to remove the adapter first because if we do it any other way, any air inside the chamber will just fly right out. It'll just seep right out, right? Not even seep, it'll just burst right out. So basically we have to remove the adapter. Now, the, when we start removing it, it's gonna disengage from the valve core. But the problem is we are still gonna have pressure on the threads well from the inside of the seal and the inside of the chamber. The pressure is still gonna be whatever you put inside your shock. It could be 100 PSI, it could be 500 PSI. Well, the more we remove this out, this seal comes off its seat and ultimately gets compromised. And then the slightest area that air, all that pressure will want to immediately burst out of it. And the second it does that, poof, you are going to chip the seal. So this happens with both nitrogen systems and hand pumps. And it's, it's really hard to get around from making them pop, right? Using a nitrogen system actually makes this even harder because if we have this on adapters plugged into the nitrogen system, well, we have to now unscrew it, the whole unscrew the whole shock in order to remove the adapter. As opposed to a hand pump, it's a lot smaller. We could just turn the hand pump, right? So trying to remove, I should do it this way, the adapter is actually more complex because of all the weight and it's harder to get it more even in order to, well, limit the chances of actually popping it. Now, they have lossless chucks or no loss chucks, what they call them, and they technically solve the problem, 
but I haven't found one that I consider user friendly until now. And that's what we're going to go over next. So what I found was this chuck from a company called PT Tune. It's, well, it's called the PT Chuck. No affiliation. I bought this thing. In fact, I came across it a few months back on an off-road article for razors. And uh, yeah, it caught my interest and I ended up buying it so I could test it out. Now, to make it work, I had to modify this fill adapter. So like I mentioned before, fill adapters, the base is what actuates the valve core on a Schrader valve, right? Now, I drilled it out from the top side down with a 1 16th drill bit. 1 16th, 2 millimeter, same thing. So you could use a 2 millimeter drill bit. And then I cut a piece of rod. You could use a 2 millimeter spoke. I just happen to have aluminum rods that you can buy them like packs of 10 for, I don't know, a buck or two bucks, super cheap. So, and basically, you're not going to cut the rod the entire length of the fill adapter, you're going to cut it up to where that seat was, which is basically where around the seal is. Okay. So in this case, I want to say it was 22 and a quarter, yeah, 22 and a quarter millimeters for this particular adapter. Now there's different adapters out there with different sizes. So you're going to have to cut your own length of rod inside based off the length of your adapter, right? And then you put that in, you connect them together and you're ready to fill it up. So let's see what that looks like. To fill up the shock with nitrogen, first what we're gonna do is install the adapter. Now, you could install the adapter with the chuck itself. Problem is this is pretty heavy and pretty awkward, and this is aluminum, and the threads are pretty sensitive, so it's just a lot easier to do this by hand, right? Just the actual fill adapter. We're gonna screw this guy in until he's at the base. Don't over torque him down. Then we're gonna put in that pin that we cut, right? Now we're gonna take our tool, we're gonna Screw this guy in, round and round and round and round. So he is already engaged. If he was all the way out, we would basically put him all the way in. When we put him all the way in, it's activating the pin, right? So now the whole system is open into the IFP chamber. So then we're just gonna take, put, we're gonna insert the chuck into the nitrogen tool. Now I have my valve over here. Now, before you open up a valve, never look face on on a gauge and always wear your safety glasses. You never know when this thing's gonna pop out, right? So always look at it at an angle, whether it's here or on the tag. So I'm gonna take the valve, I'm gonna open it up. It's gonna fill. I'm gonna wait till it gets to 420. Now that is 420 for this shock over here, All right? It's there, it's constant. Now I'm gonna shut the valve. I'm gonna wait a second to make sure we have no leaks and that needle is not budging. So next what we're gonna do, we're gonna unscrew the chuck and that just disengaged the pin in the, on the core. And now we're gonna disengage the chuck from the system, pop. And now we have no pressure in here whatsoever, which means we could fully unscrew the fill adapter and valve the O-rings in perfect condition. This is officially my 24th time on this O-ring and I have not experienced an issue. I have, I don't think I've ever gone more than four times. And that was maybe once when doing it with a regular hand pump or a nitrogen system without using what this system over here. So this undoubtedly works and it works great. It's super easy, much easier than I've ever had to deal with it before, but it's not a perfect system. And that's what we're gonna go over next. So what do I say this isn't a perfect system? Well, for starters, this fill adapter was not meant to work directly with this chuck as is. First, I had to drill out the core on it. Super easy, like I said, a 1 16th or a two millimeter drill bit. By hand, you just, well, use a drill and hold it by hand and just drill right through. You'll get through it in less than a minute. This is aluminum, very soft, right? Then I had to cut my own pin, right? Or rod, whatever you wanna call it, that fit perfectly, that allowed me to actuate with not constantly pu pushing on the valve core itself. Now, the problem with this adapter is that it doesn't fully fit in the PT chuck itself. It's a little bit short of on threads. So I had to get a chuck extender. These things are super cheap. You can buy them. I bought this one for them actually at the AutoZone for I think three bucks, right? They're super cheap, not expensive at all. And this threads in all the way to the end. And then I could thread in the adapter with the pin and I'm all set to go. Now, 
And this is for the PT Toon guys or anybody out there that's watching this that has the tools to be able to machine a solution that I'm about to propose. Guys, if you can combine this extender into this fill adapter, that would make this perfect. You can't ask for anything more than that, right? This extender has a spring activated rod. That's all that is. And ultimately that rod gets, well, hit by or touched by this rod in here. By combining these two things, you just made it super simple for everybody out there to fill up a Schrader base shock IFP chamber with either a hand pump or a nitrogen system. And you know what? As long as it's reasonably priced, anybody out there that services shocks, your own or for work or whatever, to me, it's like almost a no-brainer. And I'm sort of surprised nobody's thought of this before, to be honest. So again, PT Toon guys, if you see this, and I'm going to ping you to see if you can see this, hopefully you come up with a solution that combines these two. Hell, I'll even mail you two, three of these. I got a whole bunch of these around. So, so you can see what's, what it looks like and measure it all and see what you could figure out. It can't be all that difficult. And from what I've seen on your site, you guys make all sorts of crazy stuff like this. So something tells me you have the abilities to say the least, right? And that's pretty much it when it comes to all this. Again, if we had that combo unit of these two, it would make this a really good solution, guys. And that's it, folks. Hopefully this helps answer the question as far as filling up a shock that has a Schrader valve in the IFP chamber with nitrogen. Again, not a perfect system out of the box. It needs some modification, but the reality is the modifications are super, super simple. And once you're done, from what I can tell so far, this is a very solid, easy to use system. Just as easy now as a needle-based nitrogen solution for a pellet-based shock. For the PT tune guys out there or anybody that machines stuff like this, oh man, that would be great if you could look into to see if what needs to be done to create a fill adapter like this that has this spring loaded rod on the inside so it could work directly with a chuck, but even more so to work directly with a hand pump. Reality is this, man, there are lots of Schrader based IFP chamber shocks in this planet. And even if 1% of the people out there service their own shocks, that is a lot of fill adapters. And again, this is a problem with all fill adapters. So that would solve it. As long as you sell it at a reasonable price, it's a no brainer in my opinion to buy it over a regular fill adapter. It just solves the problem and it just makes everything a lot easier, right? So hopefully something comes of it. As for the rest of you folks out there, if you found this video helpful, please, man, click that like button. Click the subscribe button to see more videos. Click the bell button, what ding, in order to get notified when more when a video gets released and more videos are coming. So until then, I hope all is well with all of you, and we will be talking to you soon. Take care.